The long-rumored signing of Peter Sagan at Total Energies for 2022 was announced yesterday on social media with a few hiccups. In this video, we're going to have a look at that announcement, who Total Energies are, a bit of on-the-ground investigative reporting, as well as most importantly, breaking down Peter Sagan's race results and performances this year. But this was announced on Twitter by Total Energies, all in French, and they got the video wrong. They said that Sagan had only won three green jerseys in a little video. They had to take it down, re-upload it. Then the press release is entirely in French. They're signing Sagan for millions millions of euro for a fan base that largely doesn't speak French and they don't have an English language press release. And if you're telling me, oh, what do you mean the, the company's French? Well, Total Energies is a super major oil and gas company. Their annual report or universal registration document, they have an English translation of that on their website, although it does have a uh, typo in the contents page. And the majority of their employees are not located in France. The United States, I presume mostly institutional investors, has a larger shareholding in the group than French investors. So I think the Specialized also coming on board as a sponsor of Total Energies with Sagan. We are quickly gonna see their social media content have more English language stuff, particularly the press releases. I don't know about the YouTube channel, which to be honest, they have a pretty good YouTube channel for a pro Conti team who's getting solid views throughout the Tour de France. But anyway, the signing of Sagan is similar to a lot of signings in recent years with newer teams or newly rebranded teams trying to make a splash with a big name rider to put themselves on the map, whether that's going up from Pro Conti to World Tour level or otherwise. We've got obviously Froome at Israel Startup Nation, not exactly working out well so far. Nairi Quintana, Adar K, Samziki won one World Tour race, I think currently stage seven before lockdown last year. Otherwise, been a little bit underwhelming for Arkea. They would have hoped for more from the Colombian. And then, of course, Viviani at Coffert is probably the most similar to Sagan signing and going from Pro Conti to World Tour level, a sprinter as well. And you can see Cedric Vasseur, this is in Cycling News release today, a quote from Vasseur about the, whether they're going to sign Grant Thomas or not. He seems to be filled with a lot of regret about the Elia Viviani signing. They didn't get the results. I don't think the same thing is going to happen with Sagan. I think he's going to be a better signing with performance on the road than all of those other riders. And it's certainly a bigger name marketing-wise than Quintana and Viviani and probably a bit bigger than Froome globally. But before we get into Sagan's race results this year and the races I'd like to see him do next year, like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to go to some on-the-ground reporting I did yesterday. As you know, I take my job and cycling very seriously. So with the news hot off the press that Peter Sagan signed with Total Energy for 2022, I had to go to one of the 16 Total Energy petrol stations near me to get what the man on the ground, the employees, their thoughts on the Peter Sagan signing, do they even know? Here we are. Some say the contract was even signed in here. Well, get out. Sabía usted uh, que hoy el equipo de ciclismo de Total Energy firmó un contrato con Peter Sagan por 2022. Un oh, sí. muy buen corredor. Bien. Gracias. As you can probably tell, the news hasn't trickled down yet that Peter Sagan is signed for Total Energy. Will he be appearing on the front of these petrol stations in the next couple of months? Well, in 2022, actually. Probably. That would make sense. Anyway, that's my yearly attempt at journalism done. Back to you in the studio. Some of the races Sagan's done this year, Volta a Catalunya, he had a weird schedule, different from what I think they planned because he contracted COVID at the start of the year, disrupted his preparation. Stage one of Catalunya, Bora were riding for him, but then Movistar increased the pace on a longer climb. He ended up being dropped, but he had to give a pass for him on that. And he climbed way better in later races like in Tour de Romandie. And even on stage six of the Volta a Catalunya, Bora, we'll talk about the importance of the Bora team for him later, even though they don't do traditional lead outs. Stage six of Catalunya, well, I'd like to see him go back again next year or Paris Nice. He won his first World Tour race of the year, of which he's won three, including a Grand Tour stage. And the sprint competition wasn't great. He was against Impey, Max Cantor, and I think uh, Van Rensburg. But a World Tour level win would still be huge for a team like Total Energy. They have five wins this year, three are at Tour de Rwanda, none are even at Dot Pro level, let alone at World Tour level, let alone a Grand Tour level. So Sagan even being able to clean up reduced bunch sprint at Catalonia or Romandie, etc., would be huge for them. Maybe not worth millions and millions in terms of on-the-road performance, but still a big improvement for them. But let's hear what Sagan had to say at Catalonia about his disruptive preparation, how he's feeling 
at the start of this year? Yeah, well, it was pretty hard from the start. Yeah, after Tirreno, Milan San Remo, without some uh, longer break, come here. I'm a little bit tired now, but still I'm very happy for this victory. It's a good start for the season, and uh, also especially after what I passed last uh, two months before I came here, it was not easy, and uh, yeah, now it uh, looks nice. After Catalonia pre-Giros again went to Romandy, wet, cold conditions, hills before the sprint finishes, and a weaker sprint field had picked up another World to win his second of the year. Then he went back to the Giro d'Italia where he won Ciclamino jersey in 2020 and a stage. He looked decidedly uncompetitive against the pure sprinters like Ewan and Merlier. Head to head in terms of speed, he's really not on those guys level or Bennett at the moment. But when those guys all develop knee issues and after Bora Hansgrohe put the hammer down on stage 10 when there was a climb before the finish dropping Nizzolo and a lot of the other sprinters like Groenewegen, he beat Gaviria in a tricky sprint with like a late right hander taking his second Giro win in two years and eventually also taking the Ciclamino jersey. So for a guy that had had COVID, a disrupted preparation, he didn't do many of the Belgian classics, he still came fourth at Milano San Remo, Three wins, one Grand Tour stage win, and the Ciclamino jersey is a pretty solid return for Peter Sagan. So his on-road performance this year has still, in my view, been pretty good when he is sent to the right races or is facing slightly weaker competition. Now, at the Tour de France, we didn't really get to see him in full force. He was obviously going for the green jersey. Total will be hoping he goes for that, and he'll probably be a top three favorite at least for that even next year. But the problem is, as I said, his sprinting does seem to have taken another step back in terms of pure speed. Looking at the stage three intermediate sprint, he used to win these intermediate sprints uncontested just about, or well, now he was coming fifth or sixth in them. But then his tour, obviously, as you know, got derailed on stage three. There were all those crashes. He was lining up in a reduced group who'd made it through, Alperson leading out Molière, then Ballerini in front of him. Ewan on Sagan's wheel. There's a big fight for Tim Molière's wheel. Ewan tried to come up underneath Sagan, I think, through the last chicane section. He, Sagan, you can see, fighting with Case Bowl, and that's what he hasn't lost. His positioning is still excellent but Ewan miscalculated through this chicane got his wheel overlapped with Melia's back wheel and went down taking Peter Sagan with him Sagan got straight back up he had a pretty banged up hip I think the team said he had a hematoma on his hip and he also had a gash above his knee which didn't take him out of the race straight away which is what is crazy he only abandoned later he lined up the next day came fifth in that bunch sprint and it's hard to judge oh well he's you know a bit off the pace against the tour of turkey level sprint field that we eventually had at the tour de france when the guy's literally got a cut in his, in his knee and crashed the day before. My overall point is, despite him getting another fifth in a later stage before he abandoned, is that if you look at Sagan's bunch or pure sprinting in the last two years, it seems to have taken a step back. Wouldn't be expecting him to even be taking seconds and thirds consistently next year at the Tour de France. And that makes it really hard to pick up the green jersey unless he gets a really good intermediate sprint point allocation. But Sagan abandoned the Tour, unfortunately. He underwent successful surgery on that knee. And we haven't seen him racing since. He should be lining up for the World Championships on a course that really suits him in the Paris Bay later in October. But as to my point about his sprint speed, and as I showed in Catalonia, Romandie and the Giro, Sagan needs these reduced bunch sprints to win consistently. I think the Bora team was pretty important for that. Yes, they don't bring a full lead out train, but you look at Catalonia, you need to have a team controlling the break, particularly when Sagan was the favorite for the stage. They had Scherling, Zvihoff, uh, Leonard Kemner doing that role at Catalonia successfully. At the Giro, you had Daniel Loss, who'll be joining him at Total Energies, and even like Buchmann and co, lining it up on that last climb to drop Nizzolo and put the other sprinters under pressure. And then in the valley, after, say, a late climb, you need to have teammates still there to chase down breakaways like Remy Cavagna, which Bora were able to do in Catalonia. But if you don't believe me, here's what Sagan had to say about his teammates after that Catalonia stage six. Well, a little bit, yeah, we plan to control the race from the start, and I have to say thanks to all my teammates, Borans Groe, and everyone that uh, they controlled the race from the start until the end, and uh, it was very fast and great race today. Thank you. In terms of teammate support, he does have Anthony Turgeon, He's probably the best rider on the Total Energies roster at the moment. Really, really strong classics rider. He's been competitive for a number of years in semi-classics and then even to 
Tour of Flanders going head to head with Mathieu van der Poel and co with little team support. But the big question is which races do they send Peter Sagan to? This is Tour de la Provence stage one. I'd love to see Sagan at Provence to open up his February next year, just like Ballerini used Provence against a weaker sprint field. There's some climbs on those stages as well, which is suits Sagan. Use Provence, and then in stage two was wet, had a tricky uphill finish. Use Provence as a tune-up for Omloop at Noisblad, which Omloop and Ken Wevelhem, I think Sagan can still do really well at. The problem is for Sagan, again, he's being probably paid superstar money at a race with Juan Van Aert or Mathieu van der Poel or a slightly hillier one with Alaphilippe. He's never going to be the favourite or even in the top three favourites with Kasper Askren as well. Whereas on loop with that parkour, you can have some weird results. And if he tunes up well like Ballerini did, he can be certainly at least top three in that. Kent Wevelhem as well. You look at their composition of the final group for Kent Wevelhem. Sonny Colbrelli, Trentin, Nizzolo, Stefan Kuhn, Michael Matthews, Wolf and Art. Sagan in form can 100% still be in this group and I think he would have at least podiumed and he would have been in with a chance of winning this race as well. But that's the big question mark. Which races do you send Peter Sagan to? They've obviously had all the doors opened up for them now, Total Energies, in terms of wildcard invites. They're a pro Conti team, so they don't automatically get invited to all the World Tour races. I'd like to see him doing two Grand Tours, but certainly he'll do the Tour de France, of course. But the Giro d'Italia has suited him really well. It's where he's had his best results the last two years. Will they get a wildcard invite to that race? And will he go? Or will they want him to do the full complement of Roubaix, Tour of Flanders, etc.? I personally think he can get better results at the Giro d'Italia, particularly in the last two weeks, and go for Ciclamino. But what I'm most excited about, and I hope you get sent to them and specialized, you can do a full marketing thing where you can send them to Charles Sells, or is it called Antwerp Port Epic, or Trobro Lyon, the alternative gravel racing that already happens in Europe, but it's just not cool because it's on the UCI calendar. I'd love to see Sagan at these races, Tergi and Damien Godin, if he's still on a team for Total. Really good riders in those, and they could do a whole media thing around those races as well. But otherwise, Britannia your classic parry tour as well as those races really really suits again and i'd love to see him have a tilt at those but let me know in the comments down below what races would you send peter sagan to next year he can't do them all do you think he'll win a grand tour stage world tour stage how do you think he'll perform at total energy do you think he'll be good for the team or do you think he'll be a flop like some of the other big name signings recently i'll be putting up some more transfer announcement analysis videos as these keep popping up or we might do them ad hoc on the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast. So make sure you subscribe to that channel so you don't miss any of those for some of the smaller names like Hindley, etc. But until then, ciao.